Well, one of the things we've been, sort of the guiding things that runs through the series is, it's saying, well, what does it, what does it mean? And, and it's this question of whether things mean things, whether there's meaning at all in the universe. Because there, there are people we'll talk to, in the, we're talking to in the series, who say, well, look, there's facts, but they don't have any meaning. There are facts and rules, Those, that's it. But if I may adopt a very Don issue, my dear boy, facts are not neutral. I mean, do, do you feel that the insistence that science says there is no meaning to anything, do you agree with that, that view of science? Or those who say that is the only view you can have if you're a scientist? Some scientists say that. I don't think science says that for a moment at all. And in a way, uh, it's a sort of version of Pascal's rager. If one is saying, right, if, you know, if, if everything is meaningless, um, then it, that's still a metaphysical statement. It may not be one which is designed to give comfort to the great majority of people. It may also be true, of course. Um, we don't know. But on the other hand, the more I understand about the way we understand things and the way in which we explore and the sense of delight and the sense of beauty, and I'm no expert on art, but there are some areas of art which I'm quite interested in, including 20th century art, as well as 19th century. Samuel Palmer might be one example. I just sort of look at these things and think, how on earth did he do that? Turner's another obvious example. It's easy to get carried away with these sort of classic examples of painters or musicians like Mozart or Wagner or Bach and so forth. But every one of those people hints at a transcendence. And you can just say, right, that's a misfiring neuron, a little bit too much dopamine, up the serotonin a bit more, old boy. Or you can say, right, this means something. And do you, so do you think that science will one day explain all of these things um, as it progresses? Will it explain also things like all sorts of values? Or do you think that science is somehow limited in what it can answer? Well, many people claim that it will. But with respect, I, I don't like the formulation that science will explain everything. Uh, I'm not, first of all, sure that there is a total explanation available. I, I think we are actually dealing with unlimited knowledge, as it happens. I don't really understand why, but it seems to be my intuition. But to put it slightly differently, if and when we begin to understand consciousness, which in my view is the problem of problems at the moment, there will be a science of consciousness, absolutely, but it will be completely unrecognisable from our perspective. So the trick is, of course, to be one ahead of the step, to be ahead of the curve, and think, right, you know, how are we going to define that new science? So science, of course, in that sense, the Germans have an advantage on us in referring to Wissenschaft. You know, it's knowledge and, and science as human experience, rather than science will explain morality. And of course, you can point to many such examples whereby morals are employed for local advantage. Undoubtedly, it'd be mad if they weren't. But are you persuaded that the absurd examples of moral values are just a Darwinian expression? Most of us would be suspicious of that. They seem to be resonating with something much deeper. So you, you've written that you're suspicious whether a naturalistic program would be sufficient to mm -hmm. encompass all of human reality. By which I think naturalistic you mean one that assumes that there's only atoms and molecules and nothing else. Mm. Could, do you want to elaborate on that? What does that mean? Do you think there's, do you think, is, are you saying basically we need God to explain this? We don't need God okay. <laughs> to explain this. Okay. It might be useful to have God, yeah. I don't doubt. Um, but I think the, 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 the program runs into the buffers, the naturalistic program, yeah. in my opinion, with the question of consciousness. Okay. It seems to me that once again, mine goes full circle into what is the nature of mind? What are our brains actually doing? And as we've discussed in other contexts, you can either say all mind is a product of the brain, but everything I know about the discovery, even in scientific contexts, persuades me that there is an intuition of adventure. There is an intuition that one is moving always into new territory. Mm -hmm. And there's a very famous essay, of course, by Eugene Wigner, uh, Jean Wigner, you know, the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics. 
and as I recall, but please don't quote me, he even uses words like miracle, not in a theistic sense, but the uncanny effectiveness of mathematics. How is it that completely abstract concepts, which so far as we know should only exist in our brains and by implication our minds, have such extraordinary traction? So they're not just, you know, formula on a page. You apply them and things happen in the real world. Yeah. Um, mm. Other people would say, no, no, mathematics is merely human inventions. Uh, and there's no, there's no decision here, but it's more or less what program do you want to start to subscribe to? What do you think is going to be the most fruitful? It's not that that view is right and this view is wrong. Certainly not. It's more where are we going to get the most exciting advances? And my suspicion is that the naturalistic program takes you a very long way but it doesn't take you far enough. In terms of science, one can hardly blame people for being so enthusiastic about it because it opens completely new doors into the way the universe is organized. And my only complaint with some of my colleagues is to say, oh, well, is that sufficient? It's all very well saying the world is beautifully organized in a very sophisticated way and we can think about it. But everything else I know about the world, including many areas of science, is it's always unfinished business. And I'm just always nervous and this would apply with equal force to any religious faith as it would to science to say everything is being sorted out I don't have to worry about things I think in fact in that way the mystics perhaps in certain aspects of religious experience and the greatest scientists and Einstein I think is a sort of example of this always have this sort of feeling of sort of oh my goodness me I never knew that so is it, is it less a division between religious and the scientists and more a division between those who proclaim that they already have all the certainties they need and those who say mm, maybe not maybe maybe there are still things we don't know I, I i'm not a little nervous about the word division and i'm also very nervous to deny people security it's not a thing where one simply storms in and says you know you 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 feeble feeble-minded individuals surely you realize it's nothing like that at all but i think really all the time one has to keep on asking oneself, you know, how is the world organized as it is? Why is it like this? The cliche is why is there something rather than nothing? <laughs> but what strikes me so forcibly, especially in the last 50 years, is that in many ways the rate of progress in biology has been unbelievably staggering. But I get the impression these days that many of my colleagues are almost drowning in data. <laughs> they have so much data they hardly know what to do with it. I don't know how to think about it. Exactly. And though the problem is, again, one just needs to step back and say, right, you know, can we remember what we're trying to ask? Is it actually sufficient merely to get some fantastically clever machine which will provide gigabytes of data if in the end we don't actually know what the question is we wish to ask?